I'm Bob West and this is Studio 7 on YouTube West and today I'd like to get right to it and tell you about one of my five favorite Alec Baldwin movies. I don't agree with this man's politics. I don't agree how he ended up. I don't even like half the roles that he did throughout his career. But like Rommel, I appreciate the man's craft and willingness to do it at this time. There are certain Alec Baldwin movies that stand out. Mercury Rising being one of them, She's Having a Baby being one of them. But The Hunt for Red October was the first of the Clancy movies, and it set the bar really high so that afterwards Harrison Ford and Ben Affleck, oddly enough, really had to work their asses off to sell the Jack Ryan product. Now this movie, when it came out, was unique because we had just basically ended the Cold War. We had not understood why it ended. We still didn't believe that Ronald Reagan was able to outspend the Russians kind of thing. And digital technology, green screen technology, the Star Wars technology was just coming into play. And there weren't a lot of what we call battle movies or undersea movies. Well, The Hunt for Red October is a cat and mouse game throughout the Atlantic Ocean with a missing submarine commanded by Sean Connery and Alec Baldwin trying to get in touch with him, and we're surrounded by unique individuals along the way. Um, I think there's two women in this movie, and I'm sorry guys for telling you that right now, because if you want tits and ass, you're gonna have to go see something else, but the uh, Gates McFadden from Star Trek's in here for like 34 seconds, and the stewardess is in there for like 17 seconds, and that's it. The rest of it is gonna be one thought-provoking, hardcore, thrill ride through the services, through the White House, and through the understanding of how an aggressive negotiation process can happen. And that gets us into the action-packed, and yes, I said action-packed movie called The Hunt for the Red October, written by Tom Clancy. Now, I read this book in two nights while I was working security. I read all the Clancy's um, literally while I was at a security desk, and I was enthralled by every one of them. And I've been happy with the production of every movie that's come out. And we'll be talking a lot about Jack Ryan later on. The movie came out in 1990. And it was directed by John McTiernan. And John McTiernan, for those of you who don't remember your history in our film class, is the guy that did Die Hard. So it has that Die Hard feel to it. It was produced by Mace Newfeld. And again, if you don't remember our film classes, we've talked about this guy. Mace Newfeld is a genius. He did No Way Out with Kevin Costner. He's done all the Clancy movies. He is excellent at putting this type of movie together, making sure the right people are in it, and then having it go down the line and work all the way. He works side by side with the, by, with the directors, and it probably drives him absolutely crazy. You son of a bitch! You wish to add something to our discussion, Dr. Ryan? Well, sir, I was just thinking that perhaps there's another possibility we might consider. Ramius might be trying to defect. Do you mean to suggest that this man has Proceed, come... Proceed, Mr. Ryan. Well... Ramius trained most of their officer corps, which would put him in a position to select men willing to help him. And he's not Russian. He's Lithuanian by birth, raised by his paternal grandfather, a fisherman. And he has no children, no ties to leave behind. And today is the first anniversary of his wife's death. In the movie, <laughs> he's got so many good people. You have Sean Connery, Alec Baldwin, Scott Glenn, James Earl Jones, Sam Neill. And the music is by Basil Podors, who we've mentioned has done other films that I really enjoy. Now, I'd also like to bring up a few extra people. And those extra people you're going to see along the way are people that are familiar as character actors. So I want you to watch for the sonar guy. I want you to watch for the doctor on board the boat. And I want you to pay attention to Sam Neill playing a Russian because he does such a great job at it. 
it's hard to believe that he's not an American or a Russian actor. It's just his timber and his tone that make the whole thing work. I also want you to pay attention to a particular guy who I find very interesting, known as Fred Dalton Thompson. Now, he's gone into politics, and some of you are going to go, oh my God, he's a Republican. Yes, he was a Republican. I'm sorry. Some people are. But he was also the guy in Days of Thunder laying out what NASCAR was going to do to our two race car drivers. He's very famous for staying, standing there and laying down the law. And in this movie, that's what we learn is the laws of the way our naval hierarchy kind of work alongside of the way our White House works, alongside of the way our diplomatic corps works. And when you mash it all together, you have the reason why we're hunting Sean Connery and his submarine called the Red October, which is a, um, a missile submarine. This movie runs 135 minutes. It made a shit ton of money, and it should have. And it's excellent. It's wonderful. It's a requirement in our film course to watch this movie. For Studio 7, I'm Bob West on YouTube West, and this has been our review of the 7 out of 7 Mace Newfield produced, John McTiernan directed, Alec Baldwin, Sean Connery, The Hunt for October.